Hello, everyone. This is Emily Kalaszewski, Member Programs Lead at the League, and I want to thank you for joining us today. Today's webinar is titled Building Resilient Infrastructure and Communities. FEMA has recently launched the Building Resilient Infrastructure and Communities Program to assist local communities as they undertake hazard mitigation projects, reducing the risks they face from disasters and natural hazards. The BRIC program aims to categorically shift the federal focus away from reactive disaster spending and towards research-supported proactive investment in community resilience. A few notes before we get started. Following the presentation, I will be facilitating a Q&A session with participants. To submit questions, please type them in the chat box. And following today's session, we will also email any links or slides, this entire presentation reference to all participants. And now let me formally introduce our speaker today, Morgan Fabry, Senior Program Specialist, Hazard Mitigation Assistance Branch of FEMA. Morgan Fabry is a Senior Program Specialist for the Hazard Mitigation Assistance Branch in FEMA Region 5, located in Chicago, Illinois. Morgan has worked for FEMA Region 5 Hazard Mitigation since June 2009 after graduating with a Bachelor's of Science from Northern Illinois University. Morgan's expecting a baby this July and lives in Chicago with her husband, Dan, and Black Lab Norman. Thank you so much, Morgan, for joining us today, and I'll turn it over to you to begin. Thank you. Let me just share my screen now. Okay. Hello, I am Morgan Fabry, the Non-Disaster Senior Specialist for FEMA Region 5, located in Chicago. The Region 5 states are Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Minnesota, Ohio, and Wisconsin. I'll be talking to you today about FEMA's new grant program, Building Resilient Infrastructure and Communities, also known as BRIC. I will answer any questions you have at the end, and like Emily said, the slides are going to be made available to you. So when I say that I'm the non-disaster senior specialist, I do not mean that I'm the peacetime senior specialist, although that would be cool. Uh, FEMA has a couple different mitigation grant programs. Everyone knows and loves the hazard mitigation grant program, which is our one disaster mitigation grant program. And then we have three-ish non-disaster mitigation grant programs, which are appropriated annually by Congress. And I say ish because one is going away and one is brand new. We still have FMA, which is the Flood Mitigation Assistance Program. This is a smaller grant program that we see in the Midwest. Not every state applies for it, but we do see FMA action every year. Then we have the Pre-Disaster Mitigation Program, PDM, which is what's being sunset and replaced by BRIC. However, we are still awarding and have open projects in PDM, so I'm not viewing PDM as completely dead or off my workload for about another five years. And then of course we have FEMA's new baby, BRIC, Building Resilient Infrastructure and Communities, which we are currently in the inaugural year for. The application deadline is over and the submitted applications are currently being reviewed for competition at a national level. We anticipate next year's application deadline to open up this fall. I will just quickly highlight the BRIC overview and then get into the selection and criteria process. Shown here are BRIC's guiding principles and how the program supports FEMA's strategic plan. Going through our guiding principles, you'll see that building resilient infrastructure and communities to FEMA means we want communities to consider changes to infrastructure that reduce damages caused by storms. And when they do, they can encourage and enable more innovative ways to do so. Not all projects need to be highly complex or even expensive. The BRIC program positions the agency to fulfill its mission of helping people before, during, and after disasters, which are the backbone of FEMA's strategic plan. The amount of funding available for BRIC is based on the disaster activity for that previous year. So each year it is going to be different. For FY20, there's $500 million available. This is broken down into state allocations, tribal set-asides, and the national competition. The state and territory allocation is $33.6 million total, up to $600,000 per applicant. This includes all 50 states, 
the District of Columbia, and US territories that may apply. The tribal set aside is $20 million total. All federally recognized tribes may apply under the tribal set aside. And then there's the national competition. This is for any project that applicants submit that do not fall under their $600,000 allocation. These projects will go to national competition. There is $446.4 million estimated available, which is a lot of money. Any remaining funds that were not awarded from the state allocations or tribal set aside will be thrown into the national competition pot of money. These are BRIC's priorities and really what FEMA wants applicants to be thinking about as they work with their sub applicants to create project applications. Rick wants to incentivize public infrastructure projects, incentivize projects that mitigate risk to one or more lifelines, incentivize projects that incorporate nature-based solutions, increase funding to applicants that facilitate the adoption and enforcement of the latest published editions of building codes. Here, you can see who is eligible to apply for BRIC. Homeowners and businesses don't apply directly for BRIC funding, but the local government can do so on their behalf if they want to sponsor the project. So the applicants can be all 50 states, US territories, federally recognized tribal governments, and the District of Columbia. Then the sub applicants would be the local governments, tribal governments, state agencies, or tribal agencies. A cost share is required for all sub applications funded under this program. The non-federal non cost share may consist of cash, donated or third party in-kind services, materials, or any combination thereof. The cost share for BRIC is generally up to 75% federal share, 25% non-federal share. Small impoverished communities are eligible for an increase in cost share up to 90% federal share and 10% non-federal share. A small impoverished community is defined in the notice of funding opportunity. I do want to emphasize again that the non-federal cost share does not need to be all cash. It can be a mixture of all, all things. The notice of funding opportunity lists all of the requirements for the grant program, but here are a few examples. Applicants and sub-applicants must have a FEMA approved hazard mitigation plan by both the application deadline and the time we're going to obligate funding. Applicants and sub-applicants applying for mitigation projects must provide a BCA, benefit cost analysis, or other documentation that validates the cost effectiveness. And applicants and sub-applicants applying for mitigation projects must provide information needed to comply with the National Environmental Policy Act and related DHS and FEMA instructions and directives. But you can look at the NOFO for a full list of the requirements. NOFO stands for Notice of Funding Opportunity. In order to achieve the principles of BRIC, these are the eligible activities. We have the capacity, capability and capacity building, which has a new FEMA acronym of CNCB. These are activities that will enhance the skills, expertise and knowledge to expand or improve the administration of mitigation. There are five subcategories of CNCB, which are building code activities, partnerships, project scoping, mitigation planning and planning related activities, and then other activities. Then we have mitigation projects. These are the standard bread and butter projects that we see all the time in mitigation. And then management costs. So big news on the management cost front. FEMA is now covering 100% of management costs for both the applicant and the sub applicant. Previous programs had a 75-25% cost share for management costs, but BRIC is now at 100%. We also have non-financial direct technical assistance. This is another fun new activity under BRIC. It's intended for communities that have a need to build capacity and capability to improve their resiliency to natural hazards and ensure that they're capable of building and sustaining successful mitigation programs, submit high quality applications and implement new and innovative, innovative projects that reduce the risk from a wide range of natural hazards. States cannot apply for this non-financial direct technical assistance, only communities can. 
Nationwide, 10 communities will be chosen for this, one per region. So BRIC is not PDM 2.0. The BRIC program will set clear priorities based on um, the lifelines and infrastructure projects, building codes, shared responsibility and partnerships, and innovative projects that reduce risk. It also builds capacity. BRIC expands eligible capability and capacity building activities, including building code adoption and enforcement efforts and establishing partnerships. Mitigation will pilot in-person non-financial technical assistance for communities, what I had just spoken about on the previous slide. And there's also a mitigation action portfolio that showcases innovative infrastructure projects and signals the shift in the types of projects that BRIC will promote. BRIC is also increasing flexibility. BRIC will reduce limitations or funding caps. The number of applications and funds per state, the project caps, the state allocation and project scoping is all more flexible than PDM was. And then also BRIC allows pre-award costs to develop applications at any time instead of just in the application period. BRIC will streamline processes as well. FEMA GO will streamline the application process. Training has been offered on FEMA GO and will continue to be offered on FEMA GO. Additionally, there are webinars on FEMA GO training on the FEMA website. And then also FEMA regions can approve two month, two 12 month extensions based on simple consistent checklists. Whereas previously we would need headquarters approval to do so. And then there's phased projects. So phased projects are those that receive funding for only certain complex activities. They are approved to allow the applicant to develop a full scope of work or data package to support the project description. So please note that phase one of a phased project and project scoping are not the same. The difference between them is that for phased projects, they have a promise of phase two funding where project scoping does not. For example, to conduct engineering design and feasibility studies for larger or complex community drainage projects or critical facility retrofits, such as for phase projects. If after phase one, the project demonstrates that it is eligible, cost-effective and technically feasible, phase two for funding for construction is awarded. This was not previously allowed in our other grant programs. So there is some eligibility criteria for BRIC as with any grant program. The projects must be cost-effective, align with a state hazard mitigation plan and local or tribal hazard mitigation plan, be in conformance with the environmental and historic preservation and all other applicable federal, state, tribal, local laws and regulations. Mitigation projects must at a minimum be in conformance with the latest published editions of relevant consensus-based codes, specifications, and standards that incorporate the latest hazard-resistant designs. Mitigation projects must solve a problem independently or cons constitute a functional problem of a long-term solution. So it must actually be a mitigation project. We're obviously not gonna fund something that's not mitigation. And then mitigation projects must be technically feasible and effective. The HMA guidance and the BRIC Notice of Funding Opportunity, NOFO, will be what we use to determine project eligibility. If you've ever applied for either FMA or PDM in the past, you know about e-grants. We are no longer using e-grants. All BRIC and FMA grants must be applied for using the new FEMA Grants Outcome, FEMA Go. The development of FEMA GO is a multi-year effort to modernize and transform the way FEMA conducts grants management. FEMA GO will streamline the process to apply for, track, and manage FEMA grants. We don't fully know what the FY21 upcoming BRIC deadlines will be, but here are the FY20 BRIC deadlines from this past year. FEMA really does want this time frame to be the same year to year, but because this has to be approved by Congress, the dates may vary every year. 
I think it's safe to say the application period will open up in the fall, likely at the end of September, and the applications will likely need to be received in FEMA Go by the end of January 2022. We did have a technical assistance deadline this year, and I expect there to be another one in the years to come. Please reach out to your state hazard mitigation officer to see when the state internal deadlines are, as they are always earlier than FEMA's deadlines. So speaking of the state hazard mitigation officer, because it is very important that you reach out early and often to the state hazard mitigation officer, here is the Michigan SHMO contact information. Yes, I did say the word SHMO. This is not an insulting term to match NEP. Um, it is what we call the state hazard mitigation officers. It's their acronym. Um, they know it, they love it. It's, I'm not insulting him. So it is Matt Schnepp, his phone number and his email is listed here, along with the general Michigan mitigation email inbox. Like we said earlier, this slide deck is going to be provided for you, but I'm also going to give you a minute to screenshot this or jot it down because it is very important that you reach out to Matt immediately if you're planning on submitting a project. Okay, so when selections are announced, it will be on a public website. Each sub-application that was submitted will have one of these three statuses next to them. It will say either identified for further review, which means the sub-application is potentially eligible and there is funding available for the project. This is when my team at FEMA will begin an in-depth in programmatic review and send what's called a request for information, RFI, to get the sub-application completely eligible for funding. The sub-application may also say not selected, which means that the sub-application is eligible, but FEMA ran out of money to fund the project. Or it could say does not meet HMA requirements, which essentially means that the sub-application is ineligible for HMA funding. I can take any questions you have now, but I would also like to note that something FEMA really got right with launching this new program is all of the resources we've created and posted on our website. If you haven't checked it out yet, I highly recommend doing so. It is very well done. FEMA.gov slash brick. Okay. Thanks, Morgan. Uh, we did have a question come in, if you could um, answer it to the best of your ability. What is mitigation? Oh, that's a great question. So mitigation is essentially stopping the cycle of disaster. So um, a lot of mitigation activities that we'll see, especially in the region five states are acquisitions of flood prone homes. So we'll completely acquire and demolish the homes that are um, oftentimes getting flooded. And then that parcel needs to be left in open space in perpetuity. So no one else can buy on it, build a house on it or anything like that to then get flooded again. Another project we see oftentimes are safe rooms, tornado safe rooms. So if you're in a high hazard area for tornadoes, you can build a safe room for tornadoes for the community to go to. Um, and then as with brick, you can see that we are um, getting into more of the infrastructure type projects. So we're seeing a lot of flood control projects and things like that. But mitigation is essentially just um, helping prevent a large quantity of losses, um, either from lives or property due to a disaster. Excellent, thanks so much. Um, I know you mentioned the state hazard mitigation officer. Is that who um, interested applicants should contact with questions or um, should they also feel free to reach out to you? Your first point of contact will be the state hazard mitigation officer. Unfortunately, um, FEMA does not have the bandwidth to be able to answer all questions for all communities who do have questions regarding our grant programs. Um, and the state hazard mitigation officer is the one who prioritizes and determines what does get submitted to FEMA. And they'll also know if they have other grant funding available for you, like the um, if there's HMGP, the disaster funding that you can also apply under. So that, that'll be your first point of contact. Excellent. And for more information, it's FEMA.gov slash BRIC, correct? Yes, B-R-I-C. All right. B-R-I-C. Excellent. 
Uh, thank you so much, Morgan. I want to remind folks that have joined us for this information today. We will email today's PowerPoint slides out to all of those who participated, um, including the link to the FEMA website, so you can follow that for more information. In addition, as, been, as has been the case with our other, other webinars, this will be posted in multiple formats for you to review or share on our website, www.mml.org. Next up in the League's event series, we have an Encore newly elected officials training that's taking place on April 10th from 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. We have a Live with the League scheduled for April 5th at noon, which you can participate in via Facebook Live. Uh, we have another webinar, Creating Equity Through Opportunity, CEO Workforce Development on April 30th from noon to 1 p.m. And we have our Elected Officials Academy Virtual Core and Advanced Weekender that will be held April 30th through May 1st. Registration for that will open next week. Stay tuned for more information and other important webinar topics as we continue to provide you with timely updates and resources. Thank you all. Thank you, Morgan. And that concludes our session for today. Thank you.